The Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And special guest? Oh, uh, Ryan Anderson. How you guys doing? So we got the double Ryan podcast going. The non-confusing hey. treatment of R&R. <laughs> it was a popular name at one time, right? It, apparently it was. I remember when I was like the only kid in my whole school named Ryan, but now I just meet a whole bunch of people named Ryan, so I don't know what happened. But something in the late 80s must have just triggered a lot of people. Let's just call him Ryan. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Well, that's like Spencer's now becoming a comeback name. There used to be a time period where nobody was named Spencer. Like, I was the only person at Twain Hearts Elementary that was named Spencer and so on. But more and more, I hear people's kids' names are Spencer. So The way you say it with this, like, this, this uh, gravitas to your voice, like, there was a time in the long, long ago, there were so few of us. <laughs> in the Wayback Machine, we fall. There was, a, there was just a couple of us, you know. When you met another Spencer, it was like meeting a... Holy grail of another man. You almost could relate. You could have tea. You could have coffee. Why not? Now well, you can't I even will... trust these guys. You don't even know where they come from. You don't know their background. I will say that, like, um, I don't really know. I'm sure there is some famous Spencers. I can't think of very many famous Spencers. Spencer Tracy. There's a handful. Well, yeah, like Spencer Tracy. But there's a handful of, like, famous Ryans. But it's, like, it's at least not as bad as, like, you know, you got Ryan Gosling. You got Ryan Reynolds. You got Ryan Adams. It's not as bad as, like, being a Bruce. Because you got to meet up with, like, Bruce Lee, Bruce Springsteen, Bruce, Bruce Willis, Bruce Campbell, Bruce Wayne, you know, so there's all like these Bruces that have really, so I think that's one of the last names you want to have is Bruce, because there's too much to that name you got to meet up to. Ryan's like, oh, I could I could do some sit-ups, I can get the Ryan Gosling, yeah. <laughs> there's a way to look at the end of that. Yeah. Well, we all got the magical new game of Fallout 4. Which, it's, th- that was one of those ones where, I remember after I played Fallout 3, after you let me borrow it, and I put in the most copious amount of hours known to mankind into one game, it burnt me out so much on that genre that when I tried other games that were similar to Fallout, it'd be like I played Borderlands, and I'm like, it's Fallout with multiplayer. <laughs> and then I played Rage, and it was all, it's Fallout with cars. It was just like, it was so hard for me to get in these games that were technically really good games, but after, like, that copious amount of time in Fallout, it just burnt me out. Like, I just felt like been there, done that, shot that mutant before. Mm. Well, yeah, I'll say that, like, um, I haven't really played a whole lot of, like, long, ongoing RPGs like that. But Fallout 3 was, like, the first one I really just got into. I don't really know why. It was just my brother had it, and I borrowed it. I'm like, oh, and I just got hooked into it. So I ended up getting it for, like, the, uh, for the 360. Sort of my own file and all that. And just... I don't know. I'm not really into like because sometimes games like that can be a little too overwhelming for me. They can seem a little too big too like I don't know where to start. But something about Fallout just really hooked me in. And I, even though people tell me that like, oh, yeah, you should play you should try uh, Sky Skyrim and this and that. It's better than Fallout 3. I'm just like, yeah, it's it's fantasy, though. I'm more into the sci fi post apocalyptic thing. So, yeah, well, I mean, this is almost the reason why like when New Vegas came out, it was still the point where I'm like, I don't know. I, I felt like I was just there in the Fallout zone. So hopefully I kind of assume that by the time Fallout 4 comes out, enough time will have passed. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. so far I've only put in a couple of hours into the game. And it starts, I love the beginning how that game starts off. It has a really neat intro. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, I think... Ryan, what'd you yeah, think? Yeah, I think, I think the open opening sequence of, of that one's really good. But, um, you know, Bethesda has their, their type of games that they create, so... You know, I I played Skyrim. That was the first one I had that with that open world ex, open world experience. So um, enjoyed that one quite a bit. So and Fallout has like a, kind of a different flavor to it. So always watch my puns, play, friends play in Fallout, but never never jumped into it myself until until this one. So I'm kind of a newbie into the mechanics of it. Now I've <clears> never <throat> really ever played one of those Elder Scroll games. Are they as far as kind of the mechanics go? Is it very similar to kind of Fallout? I mean different times but the way that the game plays out and the way that the missions work and so on the interaction with the world is that kind of similar like that yeah i would say so i mean it's you're 
dungeon crawling or your vault troll, like you're going through a vault or, you know, kind of going to underground areas that are your, your dungeons, basically. So they're all kind of kind of the same, I would say, a little bit. Uh, I will say that in this one, I'm just like scrounging the wasteland for any little trinket or anything just so I can, you know, take it apart <laughs> and figure out what it actually goes to as far as, you know, upgrading weapons and all of that. So I'm, I'm finding mm-hmm. most of my time is spent just looking around instead of like actually focus on you know mission objectives or, or anything like that so well fallout is it's, that kind of game where you can just literally just start wandering off and going huh i wonder what's on top of that mountain there and just go walk up there and next thing you know you might find like the interior of this tree or something weird like that that goes somewhere that you had no idea what was going on and where you know other games is kind of like okay here's a mission there go do this go do that and so on this one you could just literally just start stumbling around which could be good or bad, because sometimes you'll stumble into a horrible place where death awaits, but... Like, I noticed that um, this one, because before I was just very much... I'm not going to lie, when I actually first got um, Fallout, when I, when I first played Fallout 3 for the first time, I just wasn't... I'm, just, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm just bad at video games. I'm just a dumbass, and I couldn't read the compass right. So I was just wandering around, and I wandered into, like... Before I even went to Megaton, I went to like that little big town where you're like, oh, you got to go into this like super mutant zone and save one of our friends and all that. Like, you oh, know? Okay, no problem. So, and that's when I'm just like, and I just didn't know what the fuck was going on, and I just I somehow pulled it off. I don't know how, but that was that's when you that when you that low of a level and you first walk in, there's super mutants out there. Like, what the fuck? And yeah, they really did have that real like. It actually did have like that's why I like. Well, I mean, I'm sure um Scott, I'm sure Elder Scrolls has this, but uh, Fallout definitely has some of those like horror survival things to it you know which um i guess i don't see in a lot of rpgs but that one definitely has it and uh just like you know having to like sneak by and you know just like all i have is like five like rounds in this fucking revolver that does no damage just basically and like a few like frag grenades but no um this one i mean new vegas was kind of it wasn't a bad game it was just kind of whatever to me it seemed kind of like it was trying to hold you back, trying to make you a little weaker. Plus, in some ways, that some of the mechanics were a little messed up. And it would, like... One of the dumbest things, one of the dumbest things possible to me. I mean, in concept, it sounds cool. But it's, like, rather than have an overall kind of, like, karma arc or how people re- receive you, it's, it was more like, okay, this clan of people hates you. This clan of people loves you. These guys are neutral. It depends on how you treat them. And what was the stupidest fucking thing to me, though, is you come across, like, a group of r- rapists and murderers you kill them, like, okay, these guys are all bad guys. The game clearly labels these guys as bad guys. I'm going to loot their shit. Oh, wait, I lose karma if I steal from rapists and murderers, you know? So it's one of those things It's like, what? You know what I mean? Like, what was the point of me breaking into this place and killing all these fuckers if I can't steal their shit? Yeah, it, that, that was the only thing that was kind of... It always bothered me in Fallout 3, sort of, was they had that karma system, which I don't think is in number 4. If it is, it's got to be unlocked later or something like that. Um, but it was that one where, you know, most of the time it made sense, but every once in a while there would be those things where it's like, well, that's actually kind of a personal opinion on how, if you think this is good or bad, like who's the judge on that? And that game would do stuff like that, mm-hmm. which kind of broke the mold that are you going to try to be good karma or bad karma? Cause whenever games mostly give me those choices, it's kind of like in mass effect and so on. The thing I like to do first and foremost is when I play the game, I answer all the questions like, how would I answer the question? I wouldn't, I don't just go like, I'll just answer them always in the good form. Or I'll just do everything in the bad form. I like to just kind of go where like, well, but this one I would say, yeah, but this one I'm not going to agree with, you know, and just play the game like that and see how the progression takes me there. Yeah, I think that's that's probably a kind of an awesome idea, awesome concept, you know, for Bethesda to do with their open world games. I mean, you're pretty much having your own experience as you're going through it. So as far as like world immersion and everything, that uh, I think that that's why you play those games. Yeah, it's the cool one, but yeah, they had this weird thing, though, where you would do something like that, yeah, you would kill a bunch of these horrible, horrible, like, child slavers or so on, but then you take, like, their guns, and then it's like, oh, you did wrong. Or the other thing that would always kind of bother me, too, is say, like, you were trying to open a door, and then you accidentally pick up the guy's fucking, like, fork and knife, or his toaster or something like that, and the next thing you know, the town's (laughs) decided to shoot you, they're like, there's that evil bastard, kill him, kill him! Oh, sorry, I was just trying to open a door here. You stole, you thief! He took a fucking toaster! He took a fucking toaster! You know, just, it's just this whole, like, like pull out the pitchforks and torches and shit. Well, because all it would take is just for you to be slightly away from the door that instead of, like, the action of 
opening the door, you grab mm -hmm. something. And then it auto saves as soon as you leave. I just get this <laughs> image. And the, and the alternate reality where you died, they have like your head, you have your, your body on a noose hanging by the interest. This is what happens when you steal toasters in this town, you know? <laughs> exactly. Which like, I, let's not go to Megaton no more. So far in this game, I noticed that there, I, I haven't seen the karma system, and then I haven't seen like the stealing. Like it's a problem yet. I was wondering about the, some of the stuff. Like I mean, I don't know. I haven't really tried it because I usually do just do the good guy things. I don't really know why. I just usually do every once in a while. I usually play two levels at the same time. Two two files. One level I do everything good. One level I do everything bad. Or Usually the good ones kind of like I'm not trying to sell like a goody two shoes. It's usually with most of the stuff I do anyway, minus a couple of shitty things here and there maybe. But um, I, this one I've been doing. I've just been playing one file, and I'm kind of wondering because I haven't really done anything bad. I'm wondering if I suddenly, you know, did, like it probably is an AI thing where as soon as you hurt somebody, everybody comes running to stop them. Because I'm guessing you guys. By this point, you've probably had a sanctuary kind of startup, right? I don't know if you guys have added a whole lot to it, but you guys have probably got to this point where sanctuary is kind of starting up, right? Yeah, as far as, because I've only gotten a couple hours into it, I pretty much got the garage, and then I got those the other people um, to where they start up their little town thing, and that's as far as I got. And then I watched Ryan go farther on his game. <laughs> yeah, I like Well, I, there, there is this, oh, sorry, cut you off, go ahead. Oh, the, the yeah, just the, the the building mechanic. I've I've played enough of it that I definitely don't like it. You know, I, I think that there's some developer tools missing. Instead of like being in that first or third person to build your town, I I kind of don't have much fun with it. I I can see the building thing. I will say at first I didn't really care, but the more I played around with it and learned a little better, I actually kind of liked it. And I did kind of spend like a good like few hours just trying to build up my big clubhouse basically, for my character. <laughs> for you and your dog to go hang out in. <laughs> what the, I'm glad he doesn't have a... Yeah, exactly. I gave him the biggest doghouse because dog meat deserves a nice doghouse. And uh, basically, it's two stories. Basically, um, I was, I, I, I'm glad it doesn't have a karma system because I would probably be evil just for this shit alone. I was going over to Sanctuary, stealing all their supplies and going back to my place across the river and just <laughs> building up on it. Mainly out of, like, spite because there's a... There's a couple you you help. There's like the lady who's like the fortune teller who's a who's a druggie. There is the barter lady. There is Preston who I think I like Preston. I think he's cool. He asks for too much help, but I think he's a cool character. I think that's supposed to be the son of the cowboy that dies in a uh, Megaton. Well, maybe I'm no, wrong no, no, here. because that can't be because this one's like because doesn't Fallout Three take place way after this game? Maybe it does. Maybe because this maybe one's that's... only this one's only two hundred years after like the nuclear bombs went off. Where I thought Fallout Three was like five hundred or six hundred years. Okay. okay, I haven't really kept up with the lore. I just assumed because he looked a little younger. I assumed that was probably the son of the of the uh, cowboy that gets killed by that one hitman in the bar. You know what I'm talking about? I know which one you're talking about. I mean, I could be wrong there. Like these these could be in the same timelines. Because I don't. Know, where are you supposed to be in America in this game? Boston. This one's in Boston. Oh, it's in Boston. 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 Okay. Yeah, but um, there is a, uh, what was I going to say? So, and then there's like that Asian couple you help out, and the guy seems really down. The lady, because I guess they lost their kid or something. And I was like, whatever. You know, and I, when, I, when I first got there, I started helping them out. Like, okay, here's some beds. Yeah, I'll help out a little bit here and there. And then I know it's just programming. I know it's an automated thing. And I walked past the lady, and she's all like, don't, don't think this makes us friends. I'm just like. The dark-haired lady? Oh, this... Yeah, she had yeah, the Asian lady. I'm like. Oh, this fucking bitch! So then I just, <laughs> you just start pistol and whipping her in the street. This, and then you look at the other guys like, "This is what happens if you act up towards me." <laughs> I give and I take. <laughs> and this lady's being fed complex. to my dog. You start just dragging her away. <laughs> No. Oh, well, what I did is I did take her house. I made her a house. I took the house. I took her bed. I basically took all the shit I just made for him. She's like, fuck y'all. It's going over to my... It's going. This is for my dog now. So, so you just li were literally like an Indian giver to that town. <laughs> totally. Yeah, totally. I'm just kind of like banking on like, okay, any other town and settlement I'll, I help out. It's almost just out of spite of this, what this like, you know, pre-AI said. I take things a little too personally, I guess. Maybe a little too petty in some ways. No, no, it's not true. Because I remember when I saw that lady, I was, 
I thought the same thing. I was like, dude, what a cunt. Like, I just came in here. Like, because she's at first she's bad mouth. Saved you. them? Yeah, you literally save them. Like, they, they would have fucking died without you. But, you know, you're going there. You, you're doing the nice thing. You're just like, hey, what's going on? Just saved you guys. Just got this cool armor thing, you know. Helped you guys out from the Raiders. Just like, yeah, whatever. Get the fuck out of here. Who this? You think you're special? You're like, what? Uh, yeah. And then you, <laughs> then you make them a house. <laughs> you make them beds. You make them a water purifier. Like, don't think this makes us friends. It's like, oh no, all that, all that shit's gone. You, you lost your chance, bitch. You lost your chance. I'm gonna. I almost want to see if you just wall that whole town off, just to like, keep them from the outside world. You know? Yeah, just put like unfriendlies in here. Yeah, exactly. That make a little. Uh, sir, you, you put all this money into it. You could have probably just killed them and got away from it. I mean, it's the wasteland. Nobody cares. Like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. The world's gotta know. <laughs> that there's no there's no good in here and they gotta be walled off from society they must be shamed ah oh, you should you gotta build them like a little pen like the characters in randomly spawn you could like put them in somewhere and just keep them isolated that's a good point throw on some food and all good maybe you could put the little gun turrets cause you got the gun turrets to keep shit out of the of the towns maybe you could put the keep the gun turrets in there to keep them in you know <laughs> <laughs> the guns are facing towards them <laughs> yeah what if a death claw comes? Not my problem. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have a death claw in there than you. Yeah, I feel like you could train a death claw, you know. In so time. Have, have you noticed that the game's kind of glitchy right off the bat? It's Bethesda. It's glitchy as fuck. Like, I mean, that game froze on me in, like, the fifth door I went through. <laughs> and then I had to it restart has, the game twice. It hasn't froze on me yet, but it definitely has been... Um, Glitchy-ish, but that's like every Bethesda. That's all. Well, I mean, that's every Fallout game. I can't say every Bethesda game, but definitely every Fallout game I've played has been glitchy. And I think that's always the thing that, like, probably these are the games. If you play them about like six months to a year down the road, when they've had, put some more patches in, then you probably get this very fluid experience. But sometimes it's like, if not, then you're kind of the test dummy. Well, some of the re reviews I've been seeing, like, have been downing the game for the lack of, like, graphics and the amount of glitches. I'll say that every once in a while there's a glitch where you're just like, you motherfucker, and it just drives you crazy because there's nothing you can do to get out of that. That's few and far between, but it has happened once or twice, at least in other Fallout games for me. Like, mm -hmm. there, is a, there is one file where it glitched out right in this where, right where I was in, like, some kind of room, and for whatever reason the door wouldn't open. So here I am forever stuck in this door. So I had to go a bunch of saves back. To before after I you know had a, had to go through all this stuff so every once in a while there's something like that but then um, there is uh, like in this game I want to say I haven't had I mean this, it's more of just small little graphical glitches but I hear people complaining so much about like the graphics and it's one of the things when you got a game this big with this many options of course you have to cut down on something well to me the graphics look they still look pretty darn good I mean mm -hmm. yeah once again the game's huge I mean. You can't expect some like, you know, Arkham Knight graphics or anything like that, or Metal Gear Solid or Star Wars Battlefront. But it is one of those ones like, it looks really good because the thing about it to me is it feels about the same as Fallout Three. Like even the control scheme, I'm like, wow, they're still keeping the same control scheme. And at first, I, I had to change it around because I'm like, are you kidding me? On the PlayStation, the, they, the touchpad, you got this touchpad here, and the, what you're gonna use it for is to switch the views, like it's your select button or something. Mm -hmm. And I understand because it's like they have the share button and that thing's just dumb, so can't use that. But it was like, this should be your menu button, so I switched that over and made circle the change one instead. But I just thought that was so weird. It's like, that's what you're going to do? You can't flip through any of your items there? It, the game almost feels like it was ported to PS4 from like PS3 or anything like that. I don't know why. It just doesn't feel like it was almost like made for it as far as it controls go. It doesn't feel like it has that big graphical jump. Well, yeah, the graphic jump, I mean... It's still way more detailed than Fallout 3. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it more just feels like, instead of feeling, because it almost feels kind of like a, a just this, like the jump from Fallout New Vegas, just with like better graphics. Because mm -hmm. you know how New Vegas was almost like a big expansion pack more than anything else? I mean, yeah. it's a full-on game. I mean, it has, I think, 120 hours worth of gameplay as much as the other one, but it's like on the same engine. This one almost just feels like it's once again on the same engine, but just more detailed graphics. I don't know how else to explain it, but that's kind of how it feels. So you guys both playing on PS4? Or? Yeah, we both got it on PS4. Well, I didn't want to buy it on Xbox One because on Xbox One, that means you play the game the next day. <laughs> on PS4, you can play the game when it <laughs> when it comes out. Xbox One, you don't play it until 24 hours later. 
the loading times you got for that thing? Well, I got, and I also, when I got to, when I came home on the weekend, I had a box from Amazon about, oh, three feet by like two. And I was like, holy crap. Because I like, I know I got the special edition one, but I didn't expect it to be so big. And then I opened it up and then of course, you know, half of it was padding, but you got this humongous chest that you could open up and inside was, you know, the Pip-Boy arm thing, which was actually pretty well made. It had metal parts on it and everything. And it nice and soft on the inside. It wasn't just like some cheap foam or anything like that. And then steel cased Fallout game. It was just a humongous like rape edition of it. Which I didn't I didn't even get to try out the Pip Boy because I was like, well, this looks like setup time. I guess I'll just play the game and get to that later. I think it's more just for the sake when I was actually considering the Pip Boy getting it until I heard like, oh wait, you stuck your phone in there? I thought it was full on its own it, thing. So that's why I'm like, oh wait, never mind. Yeah, that still sounds thing. cool. I mean, still, I mean, I'm sure it's probably a cool thing to have, but I know I would not be sitting there playing and checking my pit boy while playing the game. I know that, that I mean, it's kind of a well, cool. Well, well, Ryan's been that. using pretty much without the pit boy version. He has his um, iPad out and he's doing it on there. It's, it's pretty it's, sweet for a, an immersive experience. Like just to have your map right there and just your inventory. It's, it's actually really sweet. I guess I could see that kind of like, how if you i could see it's something to the effect of i mean i don't really i don't have a pl play i don't have a wii u but i played it a few times at spencer's house i guess ima imagine it'd be something kind of like that like looking at the controller just kind of clicking what you want and just continuing on this game and having to flip through like a hundred different screens well yeah it's kind of like after the ds came out i i learned it was like instantly like no two screens is really awesome that's why i think the mm -hmm. wii u is one of the best i actually that's the best controller over ps4 and xbox one you just look at that controller and it's just so nice because you can just always look down and, like, always have your map open. I remember one of the first times was with the Castlevania one that came out for DS. It was just, it was so nice not having to press select a thousand plus times in your gameplay. You just look down. Don't have to go click, click, click. You know, and you can, you can look down and keep walking. Mm -hmm. You're getting more things done at the same time. So at some point, I got to hook that thing up. It just looks like, okay, you got to put the phone in this little case and then slide it in somehow and then clamp it down. And then you feel like Mega Man the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> like you got an arm buster on your hand. Did you guys actually, we'll get back to the real game in a minute, but did you guys actually see um, the Conan O'Brien Fallout thing? No, I didn't see that. Uh, Conan O'Brien, I, I watched it once in a while. Maybe I'll just check the highlights on YouTube. But he actually has... Um, just this segment on a show called The Clueless Gamer. And he's he, he, he's like, uh, he's not very good at video games, but he likes them. So it'll be him playing a video game with someone from the company, kind of like walking him through it. He's like, oh, what the hell do I do? And just crashing and doing bad. And, you know, like, I don't get this. But, you know, he's embracing it. So he, it's going to O'Brien, so we all love him. But uh, then, but they had one where the show just blatantly opens up. He's going, he's driving through, like, to the studio. Then all of a sudden, he's just like, there's like this ring, there's like this, um this uh uh like uh fallout alarm going off then he checks he has a pit boy on his arm oh looks like it was the apocalypse see you later tom you know he just kind of has a, he's like walking through this night nice 1950s town just <laughs> just walk in jets are flying by there's mushroom clouds in the background and then like he you even see that like like somehow they showed like the shelves of people's stuff and they had things like nuka cola sugar bombs you know like products from actually fallout and then he kind of goes this little gazebo, pushes a button on the on the pit boy, and it opens up. It starts to play the Fallout theme. Then he rips his clothes off, and he's wearing like a one a, a one eleven jumpsuit. Mm -hmm. Goes down, and then he just takes a seat next to like I don't know who the guy is, but just some guy in a similar outfit. They're in a little Fallout shelter, and then Colonel Brian just looks at him, he's like. We're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> like the audience just laughs, just kind of leads right into the studio segment. So it's like, oh, that actually says a lot right there. That a, a big show on TBS starring Conan O'Brien could mm -hmm. open up. And granted, it's probably just Bethesda threw enough money at him. But regardless, yeah. the idea that they could have the first like 10 minutes of their show be dedicated to Fallout, of all things. Yeah, that's true. Because that is definitely one you just don't expect. You know, and it goes to show that it's sort of how popular these things become. Like, it actually throws me off at how popular Fallout is. Because I used to just think of it as just this little pocket-hidden game. And then, and I think once I realized that, like, oh, it's tied with, like, you know, the Elder Scroll games for how popular those are, which those still blow me away at how popular those games are, too. Because you'll get people that look like the most biggest jocks in the world, and they're like, dude, I got Skyrim the other day, it's so fucking awesome. And you're like, oh, yeah. 
You play play that? Yeah. yeah, it's like the fucking coolest game ever. I love that. What, you don't fucking like Lord of the Rings and shit? And you're like, no, 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 I, I like it. <laughs> just, 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 it's, like, it's like you read the books. He's like, books? I don't need books. Well, this would be like one of those weird books. Like, dude, the fucking books are off the hook, man. Like, that's what you gotta read. And you're like, he's just weird. You're like, this guy, like, cuts wood all day long and does all these other things, too. And it's like, this is, I didn't, I just, I was so out of character. <laughs> I just, I, I do it between Madden, Call of Duty, and drinking, like, gallons of Mountain Dew, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Do it with Jaeger, though. Gotta, gotta, gotta do it right. Mount, like, Baja Blast and Jaeger? That's the new, that's the new uh, Jaeger bomb. I call it a Jaeger Blast. <laughs> uh, I'm sure, I'm sure some frat boys had to try that. Mer- pulling, like, Mountain Dew, Baja Blast, and Jaeger Bomb together. That's had to happen at some point. And they probably mix it in at the drive through itself. <laughs> probably. <laughs> they didn't even go anywhere. When uh when uh when it's okay for uh, when it's legally okay for Taco Bell to start serving alcohol, they're gonna start doing that. I'm sure. The day that probably they have automated driving cars for everyone, that will be the day that you'll start to get you know alcohol <laughs> in a drive-through. <laughs> More than just in the south. Oh, just we'll just have tape over the straw to talk you from doing it. <laughs> that that prevents them. It'll take them twenty minutes to get home to get that tape off. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't. He doesn't crash due to like alcohol. To like, to, like dr- driving under the Trying influence. The it's just. The it's straw. just like he just, they just find this guy hanging out the window with his hands like over the fucking straw, just like. <laughs> he couldn't get the tape off in time. You know, if we just gave him fucking alcohol and didn't like make give him a hassle to go through it, they'd probably just you know make it home okay. Maybe. <laughs> it's something about the tape. Just that extra step. But no, the fallout though. <laughs> But Fallout 4, I mean, I like it so far. I'm not that far. Like, Ryan, like, it's, how far are you in it so far? Um, gotten a little farther in the past couple of days. Uh, I kind of just met up with the Brotherhood of Steel for the first time. Um, Paladin, I forget his name. The ghoul? What's the ghoul mission, like, out in the middle of, like, somewhere in Boston? Uh, you, like, I intercepted, like, this radio communication. Yeah. And it's like, go to this police station and see what's up there and, uh, yeah, I met up with them, and I'm kind of in the middle of that mission right now, going through its the uh, aerospace company. I forget what that's called as well, but mm-hmm. so. I was. Well, so sometimes you, you get that overwhelmed feeling though, where like each person you talk to is like, "Hey, I got a mission for you." My grandmother, and you're like, "Oh Jesus Christ, can't we just have a regular conversation?" Can't you have? Does everybody plus have to have a mission yourself? You know? No, no, not real. We saw you. We thought about doing it ourselves, and we saw you come up, and I mean, look, look how you're dressed. You look like a warrior. <laughs> You know, you gotta like a warrior now. <laughs> like, well, I only got yeah, like I'm like five like, percent health. I got only five rounds in my gun. Oh, it's totally fine. You'll do it. You'll get by fine. We got faith in you. Oh, you motherfuckers! There's like fifteen of you paladin guys here. One of you want to come? No, we're good. You got a dog. <laughs> Dogs are dangerous, you know. <sighs> Actually, I'm. Trying to chase down my AI, he's like wandered like through the facility. He's on his own. He's got his own program going. I, I'm like, I'm just watching, looking, looking for stuff. Somebody gave uh, him his own mission. Yeah, he's like, because I'm supposed to be like fire support for him, but I'm like, dude, I'm like two floors away now, and where are you? Did, did anybody take Cogsworth? I didn't take Cogsworth. I just took, I just took the dog. I was like, bitch, you go make me pancakes at my gas station. <laughs> you know, I. I, I what initially was playing, I key stumbled. here one second. All right, I, I think know. it stopped. I think we're good. I, I, gotta, I just heard, last thing I heard was "bitch, make me some pancakes." <laughs> That's all that really matters, I think. But uh, yeah, so like when I was playing, like uh, I stumbled across this like one building, and it was like populated with like Cogsworth like robots, like just sort of flying around at random. And then there's like a random sentry bot that was sort of walking around, this like random army group just sort of like raids it they get totally wasted you know just like because they were shot down by lasers and everything and i'm just like what the hell's going on you know they stumbled into that and then i was like well maybe if i got cogsworth maybe you could communicate with these guys and no you, okay it's just are you talking so, about the are you talking about like the area where is are they all just doing the kind of farming in the greenhouse kind of that area yeah, yeah, it was that. It was, like, right below the... There's, like, a large factory complex um, just outside of... Um, not like... Yeah, Lex, I guess it was around Lexington. Or in, kind of between Lexington and... Uh, yeah, that... that Some, township. Somewhere. I know I haven't got that far yet. But, um... 
The, you know what's the one thing I think it's nice in this game is so far I don't think there's actually a level cap. I think they finally removed that in this game. Or if it is, it looks like it's really high. I think I heard they removed a level cap. Level cap. I may be wrong, but I believe I heard that somewhere. Well, because that was really my biggest problem with the last two Fallout. Well, probably I, I, it might be in the original Fallout too. I'm not too sure, but um, is that level cap thing? It's like you make this game that's ridiculously long, and then you you finish leveling up at 40 hours into the game, which is not even like a third into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will say that this one, I do feel kind of like... When, when New Vegas, I felt like the game took a lot of power away from you, which I can kind of understand maybe you don't want it to be too easy and you want to give a sense of being kind of out in the wilderness and just trying to survive. I, I get that. But I remember what I liked so much about Fallout 3 is I started off as just some, you know, just some like... Kind of like, I think that's a good way to start off. Start the game off like you're just some guy kind of lost trying to find his way. And then you work your way up to basically becoming this war god of the wasteland. And I felt like at no point in New Vegas did I ever feel like I was too good or anything in New Vegas. And plus, I didn't really like the factions in New Vegas. Like all the factions, I kind of in one way or another didn't like. Like the Pete, the like Republic of San Francisco, the Republic of San Francisco, Republic of California. Those guys are a bunch of douchebags. The Caesar's Army. Those guys are a bunch of douchebags. You know. So and I. There's several like the the uh, that version of the uh, of the uh, Brotherhood of Steel. They threw a fucking they threw like a battle royale collar on you. So if you disobeyed disobeyed them, it would, it would make your head explode. So it was kind of like oh fuck all these people, man. This whole wasteland. Yeah. It's almost kind of like that part. Like we gotta burn this motherfucker down. We gotta burn it down, Mookie. It's like that part you know, in uh, Harold and Kumar. <laughs> Exactly. It just gets to a point where you're like, you know what? Nobody here I agree with. Well, like that's the one thing that's always kind of interesting in Fallout is if you really just didn't agree with anybody, you could go to the town and shoot everybody up and just just go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, you wouldn't have any more missions left to do, but you could prove your point. Except for children. You can't go in there. And... But you could do the thing where, like, like, that was one of the funniest missions in Fallout 3 where that kid's like, it's my birthday today. And he's got, like, a little birthday hat on and everything. And he's like, well, I'm going to have a grand old time. Mystery, do you want to take me to my house? Which sounds kind of weird. It's like, yeah, I trust this creepy guy with a gun. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah, sure, Tommy. Here, it's dangerous out there. Take this Uzi. Oh, I love Uzis. Okay, let's go. And he just goes running out there. And then there's, like, a mutant. All of a sudden, like, bam, the mutant just smashes and kills him. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, was, that was Tommy's birthday. <laughs> it's like that part in, like, uh, what was it? And, um in a, a lethal weapon too, like happy birthday kid you know it's like you feel bad <laughs> well one thing i've been wondering can the dog die in that game no which makes me so happy because when i first saw the dog i'm like oh buddy it, it, it was multiple levels. maybe maybe i should leave you at the gas station where you're safe <laughs> exactly it's multiple levels i know it's just a little ai dog but it, it's multiple levels a i'm a b a i'm a, I'm a dog person b only dogs I've ever had were German Shepherds. C, I've gone through a few German Shepherds in the past. So it's kind of like one of those things like, oh, buddy, you know, I don't know if I really want you coming on. Then the thing, then like, oh, this thing can't die. This thing had, cannot die. Oh, my God, this is awesome, you know. So I will, will be honest, even though, like, I know that it's just a programming, it's not real. There are those moments where the dog will get hurt and it can't go and you have to stand by it for a minute and then it heals up, like, slowly, but it'll heal. And I, it will, but it will, it's there, it'll make this stampering noise, like I can't get up, and this <laughs> kind of noise, just like, don't fucking do that, don't do that, you know, because it will happen right when I'm getting swarmed by a bunch of feral ghouls, which I also say, I get, just take fucking feral ghouls out of the game. I fucking hate feral ghouls. I hate them so goddamn much. Uh. Well, because I remember the first time the dog went down, I was like, oh, crap. And I was like, go over there and heal your dog. And you're like, oh, uh, what do I do? What do I do? I'm standing next to him. And then finally the command came up. So I'm like, press X, give him a stem back. And then he came back. And I was like, but I was afraid. I'm like, will he fucking die on me? Because, you know, in the other Fallout game, like, people died left and right on you. You almost got so used to it that you're like, guys, like, I'll come with you on the adventure. You're like, probably won't last long. I'm sorry. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of guys. Unless you're a fox. Yeah. I, saw, I saw a kid die on his birthday with me. Are you sure you want to come? <laughs> <laughs> unless you're that, yeah, unless you're a fox unless you're a fox you yeah. were gonna make the big unless you're the big mutant guy that was badass everybody else died on you so that's why i was afraid of the dog well that's coming from skyrim like there's a dog in that too and it's like i kind of defended that you know that all those characters in there would could die you know so i was 
you know, wondering if the dog could die in this one, but it's nice to know that the dog can take a small boy to the, the head and still survive a nuclear blast. I've literally, I feel kind of bad because there are times when there's like a big giant crowd of people and I feel horrible, but I know the dog's going to be back. So like a fucking bastard, I'll just start running like see a, like see a spot you know just keep running and i'll see them all like gang up on the dog and the dog is like all right what are we gonna do now you know after he's got the <laughs> shit kicked out of him i know I remember there was a funny glitch in ryan's game i was watching where like one of the feral ghouls fell on the ground and then all of a sudden the dog his i guess he just doesn't have like a ground attack move or animation, so he's jumping up into nothing and, like, biting on their neck in, like, the sky, just like this, just hanging up out there. And I was like, what the fuck is he attacking? And I'm like, is there an invisible ghoul now? <laughs> we thought, yeah, I thought, the, I thought the ghoul, like, went through the map and was under it, but, yeah, it's the ghouls are sort of crawling along the ground, so... <laughs> but there was no animation for the dog to attack him at ground level. But but to be fair, like, the, the animations for the dog, like, they've given it a, a dog a lot of personality, and I think it's, it's ranking up there as one of the, you know best companion characters you know in video games in a while like i don't so. i don't know if other characters can die i know the dog can't unless they're using a story thing where the, the dog dies later in the story which i hope they don't do but um i'm kind of wondering because I, I got i came across i just stumbled around the wrong once again just stumbling through the wrong part of town i walk into this big illegal fight club ran by raiders i kill everybody in there and the two people left is like this uh ghoul manager and this girl this irish girl who is like her uh this 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 irish girl who's basically a boxer and they pretty much just uh they pretty much like oh yeah take this girl with you i'm like okay i'll take her with me i'm like but i'm like that's my dog i'm like i can't leave my i can't leave my dog though you know so you can't take them both at the same time so you can't have like your pokemon team with you or something like that you know so I'm just like, all right. When I first saw Cogsworth, I was like, oh, sweet. He's like, you want Cogsworth to join him? I'm like, hell yeah, join me. And then it sent my dog back to the gas station. I'm like, no, 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 Cogsworth, if you go back to the gas station, I'll take the dog instead. Make me pancakes. <laughs> he should send the curl back, back to the car, or to the gas station. I'm like, you can, you can do the dishes. I got Cogsworth over there making pancakes. You can wash the dishes for him. <laughs> can't the robot do it all? No, dude, you can't. You know, well, robot working laws these days, you can't have him be doing both things. <laughs> you guys, hell, this robot survived 200 years after a nuclear war. It's got seniority. <laughs> that actually brings up the little two things. First off, you guys played Shadow of the Colossus. You know, I never did play that game. I always I never wanted did to. I never did. Uh, well, yeah, you, you build this long relationship with your horse. And spoiler. Well, I know what happens. Yeah, <laughs> spoiler. spoiler. The horse well, gets brutally raped in front of you. <laughs> I've the seen, horse, I, like, see, I saw an episode of Game Grumps. So I know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the horse takes a little tumble. And uh, it does come back in the end. So, you know, but, you know. Oh, still, I didn't know like, that. Yeah, at the very end, it's kind of limping along as it comes back to you. So, you know, there's there's a lot of emotional ties to like these characters now, and I think that that's that's pretty awesome. So, but I'm kind of adding on to what you're saying earlier there. Like, I'm I'm kind of curious, like how like these desktop computers are still functioning after you know, 200 years. I guess they have like little nuclear reactors in them because I just you know go into an abandoned building and turn on a terminal. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it is. Well, because everything is nuclear powered though. They do explain that, that 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 was the difference is what made, for some reason, what we've learned in life, to keep the 50s spirit alive, you need nuclear energy. That's the key thing, because that's what kept the 50s all the way up till 2077 or whatever it is. <laughs> See, in the 50s, too, we still didn't allow black people into the shop. See, there's, there's two different bathrooms here. <laughs> Sorry, son, it's 50 spirit. You know, nuclear energy just doesn't, it's a white man thing. I'm not going to lie, I mean. You know, look at the guy invented it. I mean, technically he's Jewish, but, you know, Don't worry. you know. <laughs> we'll get there someday. Someday. Just just not today. <laughs> but that's the one thing. Probably a dual like, band on the road that could use your help, I'm sure. Because that's the one thing. I remember when I first played Fallout, I just assumed that, like, the nuclear blast kind of happened. Like, like they, okay, yes, it was an advanced version of the 50s, but maybe it was, like, you know, maybe 1970 three or something like that and the 50s just kind of lasted longer but then when you realize later like oh the 50s lasted like 120 years that's kind of weird like th mm -hmm. isn't that like not a very progressive society like like no we, we just we, we found the perfect fashion the perfect music we found everything I'm like why change change is bad well it, we do see it kind of eventually does lead to like that idea that 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 thought process does eventually lead to like other things because that caused like I saw this video that kind of really broke down like the fallout like lore and stories 
from like all the way from Fallout 1 to Fallout 4, which I'll be honest, I never played 1 or 2. I, I know what kind of games they are. I've seen like footage of it, but um, that looks like it almost be going too far back for me. Like I don't know if I could probably play a game like that because I didn't really grow up on PC games. But um, it, it basically is something happened where like, you know, uh, they took out Hiroshima in, in uh, Russia like right, shortly after shortly after World War II, they took out the Russians, but then they went after uh, then like that that became a, a spot for the Chinese to grow bigger, and then from there that caused some chain reaction which made resources in the Middle East more important. He really broke it down what each country was doing, and I, I'm just going off the word of what this guy said, but I never really looked into the fallout like lore so maybe he, so he's probably right but and then that's caused something to like all like most of europe to invade like the uh, middle east while america went after mexico and um in canada and all that you know just things escalated escalated until it led to world war three yeah, and then the, the bombs went off and finally put that in the, the fallout mm -hmm. zone but, but yeah. it is, i just I, that is a weird one it's like it's kind of hard to take that in like i, I just can't imagine 120 years of 50s yeah, yeah. Well, well. Keep in mind, like I mean, a couple of that. Like, it's it, like a lot of it, a lot of it's just like what's left over. Technically, it was only like fifty years or so of fifties, I guess. But then, like, or sixty years. Yeah, it's one hundred twenty years. It's two thousand seventy-seven. Everybody's still dressed like it's nineteen fifty-five. I thought it was like two thousand. I thought it was like two thousand like fifteen when they all dropped. No, it, it was like two thousand seventy seven. It's seventy something. When... And that's because that's what it was in the other fallouts oh, okay. too, which that made my character look so awkward. Because like, there's the part where like it's, we were saying that the the intro is really badass, but we never explained it just in case anybody didn't play the game. You just kind of start off, and it gives you the overview of how we got to like the war and all that kind of stuff, and explains in like a, maybe a five minute video or so or something like that. The war continues on; it's always the same, and so on. But then it finally goes to like creating your character, and you can either choose between you. Or your wife, and that's pretty much how you choose between male or female. And then you know you just you design your character however you want. So my guy had like a beard, and long hair, and everything. I just made him look like myself, and so on. But as it goes on, then you're like, oh, okay, you're in your, your family house and stuff, and Cosworth's there. He's like, I will take care of your son for you and do all the work around here because I'm just you know your good old slave <laughs> robot. You know, like we figured out the problem of how can you get a black man in everybody's house? We'll put a robot there. It's like, whoa, 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 don't, don't, don't be too racist. 2077. <laughs> well, you know, I was programmed with racism in mind. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's just the American, it's just the American 50s mindset. It never left. <laughs> yeah, so it is. We never saw the 60s, so we didn't have to accept long hairs, blacks, Asians, anybody. And look where it got us to. World War Three. <laughs> By golly, sir! I'm glad to see you're still alive. But so you go into this, and then there's you get you get like you get like a, you just get someone with like a faint tan just knocking at your door. Don't worry, sir. I'll take care of him. The chainsaw comes out. Get out, out. of here, you I go, oh, shit. No, it's the mailman. It's the mailman. He's fine. He's fine. That's that's Frank from down the road. It's fine, Cogsworth. Like, oh, my programming doesn't permit it, sir. <laughs> Well, so, like, so you're in there and stuff, and then, like, you go and you check, and, like, you got a kid and everything like that, and it treats it just kind of like, oh, you know, it's just family life. And then all of a sudden, there's like, oh, there's a knock at the door. So you go and answer it, and it's this guy who's pretty much like an insurance salesman, but he's selling you fallout shelter. He's like, hey, I got a deal for you. You can come for a low price. You can get a fallout shelter. And then you can do – the cool thing in this game is they give you, like, four responses instead of just, like, one, two or three of them like they did in the other ones. So it gives it between, like, the nice response, like, the bad response – the like the questioning response and then the dick response pretty much <laughs> or the sarcastic one which is like it's like fall out shelter why do i need that that's fucking stupid get the fuck out of here but like so you go through and then eventually i just kind of did the thing I'm like no nah, i don't need you and stuff he's like well it's free and they don't beat me when i get back to home and you know my wife accepts me if you you just you just buy it i mean i've been out here all day and you know i'm just just Try to get just just get one sale going, just one. one. The guy, guys, just starts to break down, crying in front of you, and you're just like, "It's okay, man." It's he just grabs just twenty bucks. He just grabs your hand. He's like, "Please, she don't look at me the same way anymore." The kids, they they sense it. They know it. You know. If I, if I don't get one Fallout Shelter sale, she's gonna leave me and take the kids, and I got nowhere else to go. You look over your shoulder, Cogsworth. Right away, sir. A chainsaw comes. <laughs> 
So whenever you finally get to like your Fallout shelter and whatnot, then you go back, check on your kid, and then Cogsworth calls you and he's like, so you got to see this. And then on the news, it's just showing like, you know, World War III is starting. They blew up New York and San Francisco and wherever else. And you're like, oh, fuck. And they're like, get the kid. We got to get there. So you start just like booking it down the street and everybody else is running the street and cars are like crashing and stuff and the chaos is ensuing. And you start running, running down the road and everything. And you get to a fence and they're blocking it off. And the sad thing is, is there's that insurance salesman guy's like, yeah, you got to let me in there. I mean, he's like, sorry, you're not on the list, but I sell these things. Yeah, well, just because you sell them doesn't mean you own them. <laughs> Bitch, you know. And then, then you come up, you're like, I'm on the list. And you're like, this guy's like, I, I just sold it to that guy five minutes ago. He's like, well, he's on the list, I guess. You know, fast technology, like, 2077. Like, oh, uh, you, got you got a plus one. Like, all right. You know, you look over your shoulder, you're just like, Bring the goldfish with me, you know? <laughs> yeah, you don't, don't even. <laughs> so, so then you kind of go, and then you're standing on this platform. And then when I get on this platform, my guys stand there with long hair and a beard and everything. There's all these, like, clean-cut 50s dress people. And it's just like, my guy looks so out of place. They're probably going, like, who Fucking this dick. guy? <laughs> yeah, literally. They're just like, why is this guy standing here with us, you know? It's like. It's like, well, yeah, he, he got the followers. You're clearly more than Jimmy the Salesman who's out there crying himself trying to get in. But then it's got this cool scene where, like, as you're going down to the shelter, a nuclear bomb explodes, and then the blast comes waving over the top, and then you get put in there, and then all of a sudden you're down in the shelter, and they're like, okay, again, this, like, thing here, and, you know, the doctors will check you out, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden they freeze you in this capsule, and you're like, what the hell is going on? Then they unthaw you at some point. Go to take your kid. Like we want that kid. They're like what are they gonna do with that kid? I don't know. They're gonna fuck it, eat it, rape it, toss it to the the wolves. I don't know what the hell's going on. Train him as a child soldier. Something's gonna happen to this kid. We got a twenty sided die. We'll see what it lands on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then like the wife's like, I'm not gonna give it up. I'm not gonna give it up. And then she gets blasted in the head, or vice versa. I guess if you were playing as the woman, it'd be the guy. Mm hmm. <laughs> How fucked up would it be if you did play as the women and you still had the kid and you just get shot like oh that's the end of the game that's, that's what you get for being a woman <laughs> how fucked up would that be just be like one of these ones like what do you think you're playing it's a 50s based game the woman's not going to be the main character of the story well building off of that I mean if you, you, you were you can be like an ethnic character for yourself you know, the salesman walks up to the door it's like I'm going to hear a sa oh sorry oh. I, the salesman's I, like 911 <laughs> I think I got the wrong house here yeah. I'll just keep moving along <laughs> 911, someone's robbing this poor nice guy's house. <laughs> like, sir, I live here. I served in our country. Oh, yeah, of course you did. Uh, Mr. Reynolds? Yeah, Mr. Reynolds. Oh, oh, okay. Well, oh, shit. Okay, I mean, hey, how's it going? So, uh, I got the She's survey. She's like not making eye contact. You can just you can just take it. He just hands it to him. He just takes a step back. You just fill that out. Guy goes to shake his hand. He pulls back really quickly. Like, oh, I... I thought you had a knife. I don't have any. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the world of Fallout, just the most horribly racist place for 120 years. You know, it seems probably once you actually, the bombs went down, maybe the world got a little bit more better, a little bit more Because all of a sudden you come back up and it's just kind of like, oh, everybody intermingled. Like, maybe that's all it Everybody's equal now. Because nobody's really racist. Well, now what the racist gets you like, they're racist against ghouls. We're racist against those ghoul people. Well, and now the, there's, there's the synths, the synthetic people. The oh, they androids. got synthetic people, too? Yeah. Oh, I haven't got to them yet. Oh, yeah. Tell us all about the synthetic That's, people. Yeah, they're, they're, they're androids. <laughs> Who's the new racist they're, person? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like going off the, the Brotherhood of Steel. It's like you, you kind of meet your first group there um, as you're going through that aerospace plant and, uh, or the corporate office, I guess it is. Um, yeah, they just sort of jump you as you open the door and just kind of come after you i haven't haven't actually like sat down and talk and i know there's like a character that you can get he's like a detective so i'm actually interested in meeting a does he follow sense. you around yeah he's a he's a character that you can actually get he's like dressed in like this 20s garb with the you know, hat and you know overcoat and all that so he's like so, a noir character yeah exactly he's a film noir character <laughs> is he like decker is he like decker he's gonna go after these things <laughs> <laughs> probably i have no i have no clue i mean very interested to you know see that that character when it comes up. So. See, this, this is the only kind of bummer though. Is now you got to make that decision of like, are you going to take the dog? Are you going to take Decker? Are you going to take yeah. Cogsworth and have him make pancakes for you along the way? <laughs> I like pancakes. I didn't even think about moving Cogsworth to my. I didn't even think about moving, moving Cogsworth to my to my uh, my clubhouse. It's not it's not a city. It's a clubhouse. You just left him in like I'm the town, like by himself. He's like, sir, it's so good to see you after two hundred years. I, I didn't have anybody to talk to. I just 
tried to polish the strip floors for 10 years, and by golly, it just didn't work out. It's so good to see you. Now, where's the missus and the son? No, they're not here. Oh, dear, we gotta go on a search for them. Yeah, Cogsworth, uh, that sounds good. Uh, how about you stay here and guard the house for another 100 years? Well, I would love to go on an event. No, 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 I, I think somebody's gotta guard the house. But, sir, I mean, it's really a 200, not even a raider has come by. Nope, guard, guard the house, Cogsworth. Guard the house. <laughs> You never know. A darkie may appear. <laughs> Just, your, your character's like, he's like a man at a time. Oh, <laughs> uh, sir, I did, the one thing I'd like to let you know is racism doesn't exist anymore. Cogsworth, you're such a joker. Back. <laughs> There's always going to be racism. I'm going to go find something to be racist against. <laughs> no, but seriously. Seriously. <laughs> seriously, Cogsworth. Don't play jokes like that. That's not funny. Racism's a real thing, and it's something we got to protect ourselves from. <laughs> <laughs> I will say there is actually there's that mission you year tomorrow, Ryan, where you just basically kind of uh, we're going through the uh, you're, you're helping out the paladin. I was going the uh, the uh, Brotherhood of Steel. I was doing that, but this game, unlike the other ones, you could have multiple missions marked at the same time. So what happened was I apparently had another mission. I got from Preston, I think Preston Graves is the uh, Minuteman guy. I had one from him, and I was just following this, like, God, where is this fucking thing? I ended up all the way by the coast, and I was just like, wait, what? I'm like, oh, thank God we're here. There's so much raiders down but this way, help, like, just causing trouble for us. Like, wait, what? And I look, I'm like, I have two missions marked the same. Motherfucker. <laughs> and I just walked all the way. I'm like, well, that shit's not going anyway anytime soon because I got this mission clear on the other side. I don't want to go back through that. So fuck it. They're on their own for a little while. And I've just been doing the Minuteman stuff. Did you guys get to the part where you have to clear the uh, castle of all the um, crab no, things? No, but I, I know it was, uh, it was, I was raped by some crab things in a swamp at one point. That was, that was exciting. There's like a lobster thing. Like I, there's like there's the crab things, the mer. Yeah. Yep. Why? Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> there's the mer. The merman guys. Not the mermans. Like those are those aren't so bad. But there's these like crab like things that pop out, and then there's a lobster one. This new one, which <laughs> looks just straight up like what the fuck is that? When I first saw it, I remember because there's this is where the game actually glitched out on me and kind of fucked me. So there's I I died on this mission several times. You have to go through, after you get down, after you, like, help the Minutemen enough, or you, you not really even help the Minutemen, you just help small settlements, like, say, oh, get rid of these raiders, and you help them get rid of the raiders. And then, like, after you do that, enough of that, Preston's like, okay, there's this old castle that used to be our headquarters. A bunch of the remaining Minutemen are gonna go there and stop it. There's, like, fucking four of them. Two of them will be alive by the time you're done with this mission, including Preston. And when you get there... Maybe if, you, maybe if you're good at the game. Maybe if you're good at the game, you can save them all. But, you know, okay, so we got several strategies, but at, at the end of it, I tried, I died several times. I tried both, uh, like, some of the other strategies, and they all led to the same thing, which is this many people dying all the time. And me almost dying the whole time, too. Something happened where, basically, there's all these uh, uh, crab things inside that have taken over this, uh, this castle. So you got to go in there. You got to kill them, and at some point, you got to hatch. The, you got to like break their eggs. They got like a little stash of eggs around. Now they could bust open and start little little baby crab things. Will come after you and attack you. And one or two is not so bad. When there's a bunch of them, it could be kind of a hassle. So after, so I kind of you know right off the bat, I just kind of run in there and start breaking the eggs. I'm letting the things chase me, but I'm breaking the eggs, and then I start killing the things off. But then there's a glitch in the thing. So I thought that I had them all taken care of. Because uh, they're like, oh, we'll all spread apart and start doing this, do our own thing. And then there's this giant fucking queen crab thing that comes out. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Where'd this come from? I did not remember seeing that in any of the other Fallout games. But I have to take this thing out. That takes forever. But I managed to kill it. And then it says, okay, so we gotta, we got to get enough power to this thing. So start building a, a generator. So look around. So now you go, into, you go into like workshop mode. And this is where the game glitched out and totally fucked me. So I'm like, okay, okay, I'm going in, but I'm going in and going to workshop mode, and I go into workshop mode. I'm going up to some of the areas where the crab eggs were earlier, and since I did one part of the mission before the other, the game didn't acknowledge it or realize it, so that they just busted right out, and attacked me right in workshop mode. I was like, what the fuck? And you know, this, I just had to like get out of there, and I by this point I had no ammunition left, 
and I start kind of like running out more to the ocean area. And that's suddenly where two more crab things pop out of the ground and this lobster looking thing, which I've never fucking seen before. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> and I just like eat it right uh, there. Yeah, sometimes that. And right after they have this big victorious moment, like, like Chris is like, I haven't been this happy in a long time. This is proof the Minuteman can survive. And as soon as that fucking happens. <laughs> yeah. Then you just get screwed over somehow, some way. I've been running into like gigantic yeah. explosions. You know, in alleyways, because like oh, I said, yeah. like, there was like some guy was like I finally figured out who it was. He's like launching like little nuclear weapons like in the middle of the street alley. It's like it's not some not, not a cool situation. Just like walking along and suddenly be dead almost. I mean, they really set this game up with like there's already a rotational amount of like three or four saves that are going on on top of whatever ones you want to put in there. Where like the last fall that was like horrible. If you try to base yourself on like it saves, you'd be screwed. Yeah. Because that game would save, like, every, like, hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one, it seems like I, I was doing... I got one time, I got really... This is just me being stupid, but it was one of those dumb auto saves. I was just getting really frustrated because I, I went out, I got, like, parts from, like... Because, you know, you can get, like, you can get your own robot suit, get pieces from it, and bring it back. And something happened where, I guess... I thought I, gra I, thought I grabbed one piece, but then grabbed another piece. I just got frustrated. I just took out a gun... <laughs> just started unloading the gun like all my clips into this robot I just got so pissed like you fucking piece of shit i just i get that stupid caveman rage of this game but i started just unloading all my ammunition under this clips then i go to check my i'm like all right i'm just gonna not save this but i'm gonna check something on my thing and when i leave my pit boy it's auto save i'm like mother <sighs> of course i just used all my fucking that's ammo. why I like i kind of like I, I got one of my own i got two of my own saves going along with their saves because you never have too many saves in fall. and i just went back like four saves previously and there wasn't that much you know because i'll say this game eventually i mean i do like this game a lot but there are the occasionally those moments where you think you're doing the right thing but you're not or the navigation thing just glitches out or it's not entirely clear what you want to go so you basically just wasted an hour or whatever you know yeah i know that, that that's bound to happen at some point that you know you, you can get yourself into a screwed up situation where you got to reload and go back well, that's kind of where, like, because when I was playing the game, I just got to a point where I was just like, ah, oh, crap, just killed by some random-ass thing. And I was like, ah, oh, I gotta start back here and do that again. And then I was like, fuck this, I'm playing Halo. So I just turned it off and played Halo for a bit, and then that was, like, kind of how it got. Well, I noticed I haven't been, like, I haven't spitefully been turning this thing off. Like, I have been, like, there are moments I'd be doing that with Metal Gear Solid Five. I haven't been really doing it with this one so much. I'm more like, I think I've had enough, right? I, I kind of, qu I figure out the problem pretty quickly. But sometimes it's just like, I just need to take a break from it, and I've been able to do that. But not going to lie, aside from my day job, this is I feel a little bad admitting this, and maybe I should be admitting this on record. But pretty much, I have been working on the new Wallaby Rabbit as much as I should. I have been working on it as much as I should. I've just been going on to this. Like, my, 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 my logic is, we'll need to talk about something for the podcast. So that's my logic. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. In that period, I finished the script and sent it to you. So. And now you can just put your... Put the final touches on it and we'll be good. I feel like a piece of <laughs> shit about that because I was working on it real hard for a little while, but then I was just like, this is for the podcast. That's what this is for. <laughs> That's it. I love when we use that logic, though. Like, you just do that every once in a while where it's just like, well, it's for the podcast. Got to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got to go for it. Which, speaking of which, this is, I just want to say this before I forget. This is totally off topic, but there was this Grant Morrison book out there that you got to pick up. Okay. It is fucking awesome. It, it's a six issue series. And I just bought it because I just saw Grant Morrison and the cover sold me. And all it was on the cover was there's this guy carrying a dead deer over his back, walking through the snow with, like, bare skin on and everything like that. I'm like, that looks cool. And it said claws at the top. I'm like, awesome. I flip open the book and start reading it, and I go, this is a Santa Claus prequel? What? It's like, it's like Santa Claus Conan the Barbarian style, where Santa Claus is just out in the woods doing his thing. You know, just like living off the land. And then he goes to this town. And he's like, I remember this town. It was a good town where you could get a drink. And everybody was nice and friendly. And he goes in there. And everything's changed. It's like, nobody's nice. People are like yelling at him on the street. Like, get the fuck out of here, Santa. Well, I didn't say that. But, you know, <laughs> it was literally getting that point. It's like, why is everybody so unfriendly? And he goes in the bar. And he's like, oh, you know, fill me up. He's like, we don't want like your kind in here. And so on. I was like, why? Well, you know, old Bob over there used to always serve me. You know, he was fine. He didn't water down the liquor. He's like, yeah, well, old Bob ain't here anymore. I'm just like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden, like, a bunch of guards come by and, like, throw him out and whatnot. Oh, and he runs into kids. Is this semi futuristic like, or is it modern day? No, it's, it's, it's like way past. It's like in the past. Okay. 
So, like, there's these, like, kids in the street playing with toys, and the guards are like, give me those toys! No toys are allowed in this area! They're only for, like, the prince or whatnot. So they take all the toys away, and sounds like, that's not fucking right, and he just starts punching these guys out <laughs> and everything. And the next thing you know, the guards break him down and throw him out in the woods, and, like, he's bleeding and everything. And they're like, he'll just die out there. That's a fine place, because it's snowing out and whatnot. And I want to say, he either has a horse or some kind of, like, animal with him. It's kind of like his buddy. I imagine it would be some kind of, like... A reindeer? A murder reindeer, yeah, like a mur- like a reindeer with like really sharp horns or something like that. And then like the, the then there was like the other section of this issue, there was the kid who was like the prince and like it's like okay Billy, here's your you know your present for the year. The, you know the craftsmen have worked all year long to construct you this fine, well detailed little city. He's like it's fucking stupid and just start smashing it and stuff, like kicking parts like dumb, 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 and w- whatnot. And then. Like, I, I think, because then Krampus comes up at the very end. He's kind of, like, the main bad guy of it. And I don't think, he's, like, he's sort of related to the prince. I don't think it's, like, his dad. I almost want to say he's more, like. Uncle. Yeah, something like that. Like, Uncle Krampus. And that and that's about how the first issue ended. But it was really badass. It was is just, Kramp- like, one of the one. Is Krampus more beastly? Or is he more just kind of, like, dude with a beard and horns? He's got, like, a beard. I don't think he had horns. He had a hood on over. Because he was kind of just shown on, like, the last page. So, mm-hmm. like, it was you know, the preview for the next issue in a sense. But I kid you not, though, this is one of those ones I was like, because I just bought it because I saw Grant Morrison and then I saw the cover, but I didn't put two and two together that that's what it was. And then when I started reading, I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And and those are my favorite runs. I like when it's six issues because sometimes, you know, you get into other books and then you kind of realize, you're like, how long is this going to go on for? I thought this was going to be like a 12 run thing. And now next thing you know, you're buying issue like 23 and now you're stuck sort of because you kept going. I would, I'm, I'd be, it sounds, because I think the, the Christmas, I mean, it sounds like they're probably doing some kind of embellishes to it, but I want to say the original Christmas story, oh, not, not the original Christmas story, not the Jesus one, but the Santa one, I want to say the original one was, <laughs> there was, uh, it was like something to that effect where, oh yeah, toys are illegal for whatever reason. There was some claymation movie back like in, I think it was the 50s or 60s, where some like, ridiculous over the top like nazi he was just like i hate toys i hate the toys you know so then like fucking santa claus like well that's a bunch of bullshit so let me make some for you kids and then exactly oh, yeah. well, because, because, and, so yeah. i think it's that same story because in the very back it was like you know grant morrison did some you know grant morrison whoever the artist was did extensive research on this and tracing it back to it's like it's norse roots and so on like so apparently that's where i like come from according to grant morrison well, he wouldn't lie he knows everything and at some point, Santa Claus, like, goes head-to-head. And, like, well, in the movie, it was just, like, Jack Frost or some, like, frost giant or something just says, I don't want you out here. This is my territory. And then he says, but through the fucking magic of Christmas, we could be friends and cause ha- happiness. Like, all right, you know. Where on this, I bet it's just to be, like, let's fucking box. And he just, like, heads goes head-to-head with probably some kind of, like, frost giant or something like that. No, I bet you it's going to be something sweet like that. No, but it's really cool. That first issue, I was really impressed. Because sometimes you get you get like an issue of a comic, and that's what makes it kind of hard to talk about. You almost need like all six issues to talk about it. That one, I felt like there was a lot of material just in one, so it was pretty cool. Well, even though I love Grant Morrison, I'll say that sounds different for him, because Grant Morrison is usually kind of... His stuff never seems that straightforward. It seems to go like all kinds of crazy directions, always like psychological stuff kind of like even when he was doing batman it's just like well this is some crazy ridiculous you know like long plan that's been going on for like centuries and bruce wayne you're next in line we're gonna destroy your life and everybody here knows you're batman we just chose to say nothing about it now we're gonna fuck up your life and cause this and that and batmite's gonna come in and then it turns out batman is a thorough it was all in your mind from 60 years ago and it just goes everywhere well this seems a lot more straightforward no, yeah, it, it's probably, who knows where, it could be going mm-hmm. a bunch of different places, you know, in the next few, but. Grant Morrison think, drug trip stuff. Yeah, I, but I think it is kind of more just like taking this story, making it very kind of brutal and feuding and so on, and as I said, it, it feels like it's the Santa Claus, like, story, but Conan style, that's what it reminds me of. Well, there's, there's well, been a lot of in the comic industry, hasn't there? I mean, we had Fables that was released, and that just kind of takes a darker turn on your... Well, some of those ones are a little bit different, where, like, they're, like... Because those ones are dark in, like, a different way. This one's yeah. more, like... It's not really... It's not dark or anything like that. It just kind of is treated like if it was, a like, a story of... Well, almost kind of like how it would be in barbaric times. 
you know, right. where some of those fable ones go more like into an actual dark zone of like death and weird violence and stuff. This but, this one, there's not really anything weird or anything about it. It's more just like you know, a, a guy comes into town to get a beer. He sees that kids aren't allowed to have toys. Gets in a brawl, gets thrown out, you know, and left for dead. And then decides that you know he's going to start making toys for the children. Well, I like that it's not even out of toys. Like, I'm doing to do it. it, it I mean, he's not even doing the toys out of being nice. It's like out of spite. It's like here you go, Billy. Well, thank you, Sean. I didn't do it for you. I did it for me. <laughs> Just to <laughs> piss off that fuck that lives up on the hill. Yeah, I can't even get a good beer around here anymore. <laughs> Santa, there's one thing that makes Santa get his belly. It's beer. Well, we we said this I think last year on like the sort of like post Christmas podcast, but I'm surprised that um, that they haven't really gone and made like some big extravagant like Santa Claus adventure movie yet. And I don't mean like some wild and wacky like adventure starring Tim Allen. I mean Claus. something. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, I mean, really, like you think about that Santa Claus movie with Tim Allen. Like, if you kind of explain that to somebody, like, well, what's the story of that? Well, it's a story where this guy's dad kills Santa Claus. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a second, what did you say? I'm like, no, 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 no. That's how it opens up. And because of that, because he killed him, the only way he can repent himself now is to be Santa. It sounds like a weird, like art house movie, and he's like, he's like, he's dressed as Santa Claus, so he's wearing his skin and walking around as Santa Claus, like Sons of the Lambs. No, 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 no. He's he's literally just like wearing Santa Claus's clothes. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing a dead man's clothes. Well, I, I guess it's kind of like that. <laughs> But no, like I mean, I'm surprised they haven't gone and done something kind of like this, or like a Lord of the Rings kind of thing, just retelling the story, just making it up big and grand, and just kind of having a little bit of that like holiday whimsy, but giving more of like kind of like a big adventure kind of vibe to it, you know? Well, this one's almost like a perfect example like that because it has that Lord of the Rings feel. Yeah, there's a, there's a, I just kind of looked it up here. There's there was that movie. It's called coming out. It's called Krampus. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of oh yeah, pretty, pretty dark sort of. That one, because it more looks like it's going to be like a horror movie, I guess. I mean something, because I do want to see that Krampus movie, but I mean something more of like taking this story that's been, because I've seen variations of the story, and it's always the same thing. Like some king or some politician doesn't want toys in town. Santa Claus comes in and says, no, no, we got to start doing it. And at some point he goes up against some like frost giant thing out in the woods. And then... Um, one version, actually in the old 60s version, he actually dies. There's, there's like two versions. One is Santa Claus is coming down, and there's one that there is a little bigger, where he actually died at the end. And comes back three and, days later. Yeah, three days later with holes in his hands. No, um, <laughs> and that's what Christmas is all wow. about. <laughs> <laughs> Presents! Yep, that's right, Billy. No, they all smile um, at the camera and laugh at the, at the funny dog. They get, they get, they get those. They get those like big, like sparkly eye smiles with the that you see at the end of all those nineteen sixties claymation movies. <laughs> but then, like a, a, a big Santa, a big like claymation, like a like a snow, snowman comes out singing "Merry Christmas." You know, now go buy the soundtrack, kids. You know. Anyway, um, there was. Uh, what was I going to say? There's one version where he does die at the end, but it's like, but Santa Claus legend still lives on through people giving gifts and all this and that. So uh, I, I'm just surprised they haven't made one like this, like some form or another, just some big action adventure version of it. But that Krampus movie does look interesting. The only thing that has me a little worried is it's PG-13. And I was so sure I was going to be R. But whenever they make a horror movie PG-13, I mean, not that a, a horror can't be a good not that a pg-13 horror movie can't be good it's a lot more just like i feel like it's gonna rely more on jump scares than actual creep factor or violence you know yeah and sometimes that means that like it could be geared towards teenagers that's a lot of times what a pg-13 horror movie <laughs> kind of says i mean i will say i will say i'm glad that in the trailer they have not really revealed what krampus looks like because so many movies trying to present the monster and all that, or like, or just like the whole, most of the movie in the trailer. And this one, you still, you see that it's like a hooded figure. You see it has horns. You see it has hooves. But that's all you've really seen. Yeah. I don't know. It's one of, it's kind of a bummer that Kevin Smith didn't get his one out there now, because I feel since this is kind of coming out and since he's been working on all his other projects, that might make it that he might not get to that at all anytime soon. If at all, if really, who knows, it could have been scrapped by this point. I think it will probably come out next year because he, he seems to hold on to stuff. I mean, every once in a while, he'll just like throw it to the side. But I can see his Krampus movie still coming out. What made his interesting is it was an 
anthology. That's what made it interesting. But at the same time, they always talk about how anthologies never work. But Kevin Smith seems to be at the point where he doesn't care. He'll make it. Well, the weird thing, too, is like they always say like anthologies don't work. But I think of some of the best horror movies, you know, like the Twilight Zone one. Uh, creep show and like, like I love that anthology style. I think that's a fantastic way. Tales from the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> Which really take, the only time they ever have those anthologies anymore is just sort of like an anime form. Like they had the Animatrix, they had um, the Halo one, they had the Batman one. But like you haven't seen an anthology in live action in a long time. Uh, Sin City. I guess that's true. Sin City's about the closest thing. But Sin City is mostly. St- but the, the thing, thing is, about Sin City though, I think it's kind of different. It's, it's mostly all like it's all. T- it's just like kind of the same. Or it's small stories, but they're all like in the same town though. It's not so it, it feels it has the same vibe in a sense. It's not like okay, mm-hmm. here's a story where it's in you know two tone black and white, and then here's this other story where it just happens to just be bright color and about old people, and here's this other story. You, I mean, like you, you know, it's all the same vibe, and then sometimes they they, they, mm-hmm. they end up interconnecting partial way through it. Well, like, well, I will say that um, there, well, um, that anthologies, not that they don't work. It's just they never make a lot of money. I think Robert Rodriguez was talking about that one time, like in an interview, that whenever he like most like most of the time, anthologies never make a lot of money. But even though if they could be good, like like uh, apparently the Twilight Zone movie didn't do that good. None of the anthologies uh, that uh, Robert Rodriguez had a hand in made a whole lot of money. Uh, and you just he mentioned a few other ones offhand, but yeah. Yeah, it's probably one of those ones. I think maybe the the average consumer, it's hard for them to take it in. Because yeah, it's something you got to almost like appreciate like the form of storytelling to enjoy those kind of movies. And I think that a Krampus anthology would be pretty good. Because even they would have, like, there's, I remember there was an episode, they were actually it was on Edumacation, where they were talking about the movies they would make. They they stopped talking about Edumacation, they just talked about this Krampus movie they were going to make, kind of like Tusk. And... That actually sounded pretty interesting, the more they were talking about it. I don't know if it ever will get made, but, I mean, now, like, Krampus is one of those things where everyone, like, I think a few people knew about it, but it wasn't this commonly known thing. But now I think it's going to be, it's in the last few years, it's been a lot more in, like, the zeitgeist, just because of the internet or yeah, whatever. Exactly. But, you know. Ryan, what do you think about that Krampus movie? Yeah, I only saw the preview once, so I'm not, it's kind of it's kind of weird that there's a lot of movies out there that have, kind of went the opposite direction what you expect for holiday times so just kind of going on a complete opposite with horror based movies or thrillers or stuff like that so but i don't know looks looks interesting well i read an interesting interview oh i'm sorry i cut you off there um i uh i read an, inter- an interesting interview with the guy who's made a movie and he said something to the effect of like well, even though it's a horror film, it's actually going to be surprisingly kind of sentimental and kind of really, like, in some parts, in some ways, heartwarming. He said, I know it sounds weird when you see the trailer, but if you think about it, some of our favorite Christmas movies are technically horror films. They're just not presented or shown as horror films. He said, technically, when you think about it, uh, It's a Wonderful Life is a horror film. To a certain extent, uh, a, a, a Christmas Carol is a horror film. If you think about it to a certain extent, it's about these people who don't really who take Christmas for granted, and they're just kind of shown these things to kind of scare them straight and it basically, you know, change their perspective and kind of shows them the worst possible things that can make the make them change their minds and all that. Well, yeah, I guess you got gremlins as a... <laughs> gremlins now, come on. <laughs> oh, really? oh, yeah, gremlins. One of the greatest Christmas movies. Gremlins just always has that one. There's that one part in the movie, though, that always feels so out of place when the when the girl talks about her dad dying in, like, the um, the chimney being Santa Claus. Like, chimney? that's the part I always just go, like... For a movie, it's kind of like a fun movie in a sense. I mean, it's a horror movie, but it's also kind of like a fun one. That There's that moment in there just like takes it to like such a serious place where you're like, oh, fuck. And it's, it's just none of the rest of the movie has any of that vibe in it at all. I guess because you just see a little cute little, you see the cute little, you see Gizmo. It's like, oh, he's adorable. And he's riding a little car and he's he's saving the day. And then you see like, that that is like one even like the imagery you get when she's telling that story she's like there's this weird smell that was coming from a year later this weird smell that was coming from the chimney we went in there it was my dad inside of a cost it was just like oh fuck you know that is one of those it was yeah it wasn't like he was in there just for like in a cup like an hour so it's like he was in there for no he was there for a year he was there for a year was it one year i didn't think it was that long if I, i haven't seen the movie in some time but i want to say that 
he was in there for a year. And, and I thought it was a couple of weeks. Maybe it was a couple of weeks, but I want to say that like it was the next year around Christmas. Maybe well not Christmas exactly, but around the next year when they started using the fire, like the smoke wasn't coming in, it was coming through the bottom and all that. So like, what the fuck's in there? And they just pulled something out, and it was really bad. <laughs> that, just, that just sounds weird. Like what happened to Dad? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> you guys then like well we, we looked outside. We know we you know called work. We just assumed he left, you know, said he was going to pack of cigarettes and never came back. <laughs> <laughs> we just chalked it up to the old cigarette thing. But no, it turns out it was the old Santa Claus stuck in the chimney thing. Who would have thought? But yeah, I, I, that's part, I always think of that part in that movie. It's just, it's so weird. Because that movie's sold almost as like horror comedy Christmas movie. And then you get that thing in there. And it's almost meant for like a dark drama, <laughs> you know, but... I think figure. every once in a while, it's some of the things that are out of place like that, which I think make it stick out more because when i think about gremlins even though it is this fun horror kind of horror christmas comedy i do i do think of that is one of the main scenes i think of whenever i think of that movie not so much the gremlins not so much gizmo not so much the dad with the stupid fucked up inventions it is the late the part where phoebe cates is just sitting there talking about her dad was stuck in a chimney well, that's like the part, it almost sticks in your mind more than anything else in that film, just because it's just so weird and different. So I guess, in a sense, it works because of that. You'll never forget that scene. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Something I actually want to say, because speaking about all this Christmas movies coming out, and this really isn't so much a Christmas movie, just coming out on Christmas time. I've just been, have you guys by chance got, like, pre-ordered your tickets for Star Wars yet? No, I didn't think it was necessary in Sonora, <laughs> but... You know, yeah, I have to, I'm kind of like kind of scared to go see it now. You know, it's going to be like packed for like three months, I guess. Afterwards, I'm kind of considering it. I haven't got my tickets yet, but I've really been considering it. And well, where you're at, you probably need to. Where mm -hmm. and back in Sonora, though, I don't think it's going to be nearly as necessary. You know, maybe if, it might be a couple of days beforehand. If you wanted to go with like the first showing, you probably mm -hmm. should buy them. But I don't think that. I think that like. It won't be that hard to get in there. It be, might be really crowded, but I, I know that movie's going to be big, but I just can't imagine it being like one of those ones where it's like, everybody, stop work, stop what you're doing. Like, people are just getting out of there, like, they're, they're just driving down the road, and they just, like, jump out of their car. Car keeps going. They're like, you got to get the Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, yes. <laughs> or they just, like, they're like, there's no time, like, we got to park. There's no time. Just pulls right into the lobby and just like crashes through there. <laughs> just find yeah, me. Like, I don't care. Take the keys. Just goes running down the hallway. Like, 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 like uh, that's something that they're almost talking about it like that. Like people are going to literally like, don't go to school. Don't go to work. See Star Wars. <laughs> I might suddenly call in sick that day. We'll see what happens. But no, um, I actually I'm am. Take the day off just for it. I'm probably going to, I don't know. I probably, I probably could see it. After show, it's one of those movies. I usually don't mind going to see a movie by myself, but that is one where I am. I'm going to try and find a friend that happens to the same off and go see that movie because that's one of those things like you want to share it. That's that, that movie's gonna be a bonding experience. I think you know every once in a while those movies like I don't care. I'll go see. I'll go see this movie by myself. But Star Wars is one where it's just like no, I'm gonna need to talk with somebody after that. You could do like the awkward kid thing that would happen in a TV show. It couldn't happen in real life, but it didn't, like you could see it in like one. I don't know some kind of like teen comedy movie where like. The kid brings in the computer with his only friend on Skype and sets it in the seat. <laughs> How depressed do you think I am? <laughs> you, just, you just get one of those telepresses. It's robots. that one where, like, the guy's like, "Should I, should I go up there and say something?" Because he's got a camera going. No, no, it's just not worth it. If you do that, he could just hang himself instantly. <laughs> <laughs> just like you think he just has a noose on him people like that have a noose in their back pocket all day long <laughs> he's prepared for it he's just he's waiting for an excuse to pull the noose out do you want to be the one responsible for that <laughs> he, he probably is trained and ready he'll probably hang himself in less than 15 seconds it doesn't matter where he is and Hell, he'll probably hang himself up. without anything above you're him you're gonna have to clean it up it's fucking he could hang himself in the middle of a desert <laughs> he's the Jedi of suicide he'll find a way no, <laughs> just the Skype computer. <laughs> oh. I will say though, regarding like, <laughs> pour some popcorn on it. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Maybe I should just tell him. We're like he's making a fucking mess as it is. <laughs> yeah, now he's being an asshole.
<laughs> he just poured soda all over the chair. <laughs> Which now I didn't even seem to notice. I will say something about that, about this movie, though. It's not even so much the movie. I, I mean, it almost seems kind of evil and almost kind of, it was manipulative. There's no way around it. But the advertising for this movie, it hasn't even, because like, I can think of like other Star Wars stuff where all the advertising has been like, look at all this shit, it's in space, there's swords, don't you wish you were fucking here? This is the fucking awesome, pew, pew, pew. That's all the fucking trailers and all the ads for every other Star Wars thing I've ever seen have been. This, the, all, the, you've had that for the movie trailer. For the movie trailer, you have that, that makes sense. Everything else, though, it is going off of nostalgia and, like, relationships you have with other people. Have you guys noticed that? Well, they're really trying to pull up the hearts of, like, hey... We know you were hurt before, you know. For, the, for those people out there that hate one, two, and three, that's it, that's almost what those trailers feel like they're going for. Because it's not like you remember when you and your buddy went to see episode one. It's like no, it's like you remember when you and your buddy went to go see episode six. Like that's kind of how they're going with. Remember that time that you ran through naked with lightsabers in your hands and just said it's not gay. <laughs> Those were good times, weren't they? <laughs> like, yeah, they were. Yeah. You just said that out loud. Oh, no, no, I didn't. You know, you put words in my mouth. <laughs> and I think that's what they're trying to do. They're really trying to tug at people's hearts. And I think I said this on a couple podcasts ago, but the advertising that they had for Star Wars, if I didn't like Star Wars so much, if I would walk around and see all this stuff and it was a movie genre, or it was a movie series that I could care less about, I would probably be like, Fuck that movie. Every single time I see it, like, you see Star Wars makeup, fuck that makeup. You see Star Wars, like, cookies, you're like, fuck those Star Wars cookies. You see a Wookiee, you're like, I'm going to beat the shit out of that fucking Wookiee. Like, if I didn't like Star Wars enough, because the advertising has gone beyond anything that it ever has before. Like, yes, George Lucas did put a lot of advertising out there, and you'd get, like, you know, Star Wars mac and cheese and such. But this has almost gotten to a point where, like, there isn't, like, a company that doesn't have a Star Wars something. It's like, you can get Star Wars the refrigerator. You can get Star Wars, the microwave, Star Wars, Star the, Wars the TV set. Yeah, Star Wars, the <laughs> control. Star Wars, the flamethrower. Kids, Kids love, love this one. one. You know, there's, it, it literally has gotten to a point where it's, there's almost a, too much Star Wars stuff. And this comes, and then, some of them, like, I love Star Wars and all, but they are pushing the envelope hard. For anybody who doesn't care that much for Star Wars, they're probably so angry right now and, like, bitter towards the world. Well, I will say the marketing is really smart. I mean, I'm not really... I mean, look, I want to see the movie. I just want to see the fucking movie. But every single ad I've seen for anything other than the movie has been like, hey, there's the there's the um, Battlefront game coming out, and it was playing more on the aspect of, like, remember when you were a kid and you were playing with these toys, and you, like you said, <laughs> like, playing, star, playing lightsaber yeah, snake and screaming it's not gay. There's that. Then there's another one I saw <laughs> where it was, like, it was, like, a Target commercial or a Walmart commercial. And it was parents playing with their kids with Star Wars stuff. Like, the kid, like, the dad was playing lightsaber with the son. They were playing with the action figures. Dad was just beat, beating his, like, just showed a guy, like, like, a lightsaber just, like, smacking his kids around. They're like, Dad, it's not fun anymore. It's fun for me! <laughs> Go to your room! <laughs> I'm wearing my room, He's dad. just dressed up as Darth, he's dressed up as Darth Vader, like, patrolling the house. <laughs> That would be scary. Just all the lights off, just this big, tall figure walking around. Like, not even like in a nice Darth Vader outfit, in a cheap Darth Vader outfit with like one of those little plastic strap masks like that. Just like patrolling the house with this really cheap fucking red lightsaber. <laughs> what are you doing? Out of no, here's even better. The bathroom. Are you going to get back in the fucking room? Just like chasing after him. No, you know, here's, here's what the dad does. He, he tells his kids, if his kids are bad, Darth Vader's going to show up and teach him a lesson. So what he does is he runs outside the house, puts on a nice Darth Vader outfit, and then just comes in and just starts to scare the living daylights out of, like, his five-year-old kids. He just, like, cracks the door open, peeks in. Slowly. And then kind of goes away, like... Well, because you've always heard of those, like, parents that do that thing where they put on, like, a really scary costume, and they're like, well, you know, if Krampus will come and get you if you're not good, and then, like, they'll do something like that where they'll just, like, creepily come in, which, that's just got to screw up kids, you know, when they're 14, 15, when they're 28, they're going to be in therapy going, like... Well, I'm not in therapy, but my cousin did that shit to me. He had, like, a fucking mask, and he said, like, something something off the, the effect, oh, yeah, there's a monster in our house, like, oh, whatever, okay, cool, whatever, I don't believe you. And then, like, he'd do that shit where... He'd throw this mask on. When I was by myself, he'd, like, do something kind of, like, 
peek around the corner in the fucking mask and then just slowly just like fade away, you know? <laughs> just like, and like, you know, I'd be like, no! Ah! He'd just be like, <laughs> It's like, what is it? What is and it? You know, and then, then you just see this giant dildo like sticking full of <laughs> Just like, oh God, what's he going to do? I don't know what it's that is. It's plumpy, mom! That's what he said to call him. <laughs> no, there was like, there was like, I remember there was one time where, because it was always be from a distance. It would always be from a distance. And I remember there was one time. He had like a, a a case of Legos, and my my keep my my cousin's like seven years older than me or eight years older than me possibly. But like he was like he had like this case of Legos. He's like, hey, where's the case of Legos? Oh, it's up in your cousin's room. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, I'll, I'll go for this. Legos are worth it. So, I'm going up the stairs. I'm by myself, and then I just like there's the Legos. It was the one time he actually came after me because it would always be just from a distance. Then I grab the Legos, then he comes out, like, bah! like, scares me, chases me down the fucking stairs. Like, oh, I'm just joking, it's me. So, now I'm like, oh, yeah, now I realize, thinking back, this is where all my trust issues come from, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of bound to happen when, you know, people scare, you know, you don't realize that scaring a child just does not help in the long run. It may make you feel better in that moment, but... <laughs> It, you know, it's one of those ones like. Jurist- first, I'm not per- speaking of personal experience. I'm not. I'm not. Well, like I say, like I've never done that before. Of like, even like the dogs, where like you slowly peek around the corner. Because like the one thing you can do that always freak dogs out is just don't move at all. Because <laughs> to them, it's just like, what the fuck just happened? Like you just stand there like a statue, and they just flip out. They're like, oh god, oh god, he fucking disappeared. <laughs> they kind of look around, like they see you, but they kind of look around, like, what the fuck just happened? You know, just like he's there. I see him. I smell him, but. He's just st- they never do this. Why, why is it doing that? <laughs> it's just like, I just always think of like Jurassic Park. It's like they sense movement. So the second that you stop, it's just like, where the fuck did he go? Before that, T Rex just kind of like got up and was like, put his little arms up and starts looking around, like, where the fuck did they go? They're here a second ago. The fuck? Kicks the truck over and just walks out of there. <laughs> just like, just like pouts out of there, like, you know. <gasps> Disappearing humans. Yeah, they have like subtitles. I was like, this is fucking bullshit, you know? <laughs> uh. I will say though, going no, back to Star Wars though, there like I, I see some of these like toys and stuff out there, and there was like me and Ryan, other you know I guess other Ryan. Now that I'm saying this on the microphone, we saw this sweet like X-wing Lego set, and you kind of look at that, and there, this is the thing when you're older, like when you're a kid, you know if you saw a seventy dollar Lego set, you'd be like, there's no way I'll never get that. It's cool. You, you can look at it, you can touch it in the box, but you're never gonna have it. You know, but now it's kind of like just caress it. And like walk away. You literally look at that. You're like, that's like the that's like that's like the price of Fallout right there. I can buy that. I'm an adult. I got power. And you see some kid in the aisle who's doing that thing that you were doing, a kid. Like, mom said that I can only look at it and touch it in the box. You're like, yeah. Well, guess what? I'm fucking buying it. <laughs> you, can't, you can't wait to be an adult. Do 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 do. And they just start skipping out of there and go. Like, oh, guess what? The world's probably gonna end by the time you are an adult. <laughs> It's sort of like whenever kids, like, like I'll see a kid who's got, like, a Wii U or something like that. I'm like, oh, sweet, did you get the new Mario game for it or whatnot? Or, like, when Mario came, Maker came, I'm like, did you get Mario Maker? He's like, no, but I really want it. It's like, I did. <laughs> I just looked at it, and I said, I got $50. Slap it down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. Is like You spend your time at fucking Walmart just, like, pe- pestering kids. Like, some kid with his hand just against the glass case. Like, did you get that game? No, I really want to. Well, I fucking did. I don't even want it. I just got it. I was bored. <laughs> the kid's looking at it. He's like, he's like, I'm waiting for my mom to come up. There's just one left. You know, when she finishes doing all her other errands, she said she'll buy it for me. Oh, yeah? Mr. Walmart guy, get over here really quickly. Oh, yeah? What do you want? Yeah, give me that game right there. Just make sure he watches. <laughs> just pulls it out. He's like, oh, yeah. Son, I, I guess you got to follow and watch. Why am I taking orders from this guy? I don't know. It's not like he's going to tip me or anything. No, here's 10 bucks for you, sir. Oh, okay, you just tip me. Son, you get over here and watch now. Slaps it down, <laughs> buys it, just looking at him. I, don't break eye contact with the kid, just throwing out money. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> just right there, just be like, yeah. Yeah, where's your mom now, huh? Fucking in the cleaning aisle, clean up your shit. Guess what, you're not getting this game. In fact, you probably have to wait two months to get this game now. <laughs> Some fucking gangster rap is playing in your head. <laughs> like, as you're like making eye contact with this kid. Then you hand it to the Walmart employee and be like, throw this away. Oh, that, that, 
That's the no. most devilish thing. No, he's, he's like, like break, snap the disc break right snap. in front of him, or he's like, he's open it, yeah. in fr- open it in front of him, break it, yeah. sir. I'm not, not paying enough. Ten more dollars, okay? Break it slowly, <laughs> you know. Guy now give it, it to him. Yeah. <laughs> give it to him. <laughs> just watch that kid just sit there and cry. <laughs> How much more money? I just look at the Walmart employee and go, how much more money will it take for you to pee on him while he's sitting here sulking? Uh, 20 more bucks? 20 bucks it is. You just get up to that kid and you just like, just almost like, is, you just listen to that thing and it's me such a weird callback, such a weird callback. But in Daredevil, the movie, there's that part when like, Debt when a, a bullseye kills the old lady by making her choke on a peanut and he just gets inches away from her face. He's like, like that? He's do that to the fucking kid. <laughs> and then be like, my, my business is done here. <laughs> and then you go, you go to the corner, put the Krampus mask on, and then peer around, <laughs> looking at the kid from back in the aisle. It all makes sense now. It was him the whole time. I remember... This kind of goes, this is like another story. I don't know if we probably told in the podcast like 58 billion episodes ago. But um, that time that we went to Walmart, we're like, we we're like, dude, let's go look at the toy aisle. Yeah, that sounds like a good thing. And then we go in there, and then there was like, I don't know if we ever did tell was, this. I don't know if we ever did tell this story on the podcast. If we did, it, it had been so long ago. But we go into the aisle, and there's these two like 10 year old girls in there and stuff. And then they turn around and they hold us up at sword point. <laughs> <laughs> they, they literally, it's, it's a foam sword. It's a foam sword, but still, it's, it's a foam still, sword, still. but it, it's it's very threatening. It's a threatening manner. And then <laughs> this girl, the way that she would talk is, she would always tell you what kind of thing she was going to say first. She'd be like, "Question," and then say the question, <laughs> and then she would add, and then point at your sword. Yeah, with the sword, threatening once again. She's pointing a sword at you, <laughs> held up at sword point. And she would be just be questioned, do you like, you know, this Lego set or something like that? And you're like, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then she kind of have like a look like, Psh, yeah, you're fucking right. And like, it's like 10 year old giving you fucking attitude <laughs> and stuff. And man, it's been so long that I almost kind of forget all the things she said. She did we were like at the point. She was like, first, she's like, first off, fact, I am awesome. Second question and like points. She's like, what is your favorite video game? And we're like, um, I guess. I guess Mario has always been a favorite of mine. Just like, and we were just like just browsing, just minding our own business. This chick just pops out of nowhere with a fucking foam like, sword. We, we, we just with, wanted to look at like Dark Knight action figures. <laughs> with her friend, just like, oh, yep, still just variations of Batman. Nothing new. Okay. <laughs> just to compare. But anyway. And then she's just like, okay. And then she'd like say something to the effect of like, which Mario? I'm like, um, I guess Mario World. I don't even know what that one is. Just like, oh. Okay, um, it's an older like the one. Best that's one. Old. That's old. I like, you know, just like the oldest, the oldest one that's good is Mario Sunshine. Just like, okay, all right, whatever. And then she, like, she asked us like something else, like your favorite band. Or you like, um, I don't know. At the time, I think I said Rolling Stones or something like that. Like, I, it's like those guys are old. You know, <laughs> you are old. You know, it's just like that kind of shit. And as we're leaving, we suddenly get like, who the fuck does that chick think she is? We're not old. <laughs> If it was a movie, we'd probably go back there and, like, I don't know, beat her up or something like that. But I'm not too sure. We, we, we literally got all defensive like that. We're like, dude, what the fuck? She's holding us up there at Sword Point. Because, like, the moment you're like, like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Like, you just did not expect her. Like, I just want to go look at Dark Knight action figures. And all of a sudden, now I'm being held up at Sword Point by two 10-year-old girls who are very threatening and want, and want to let us know how cool they are. That's just like, uh... We were going to write this episode. We still could do it now. You know, we had to probably think of brand new stuff to it because totally kind of forgot about it. But where we have this other animated series that we have yet to continue on called Good Old Tuolumne. But we wanted to have the episode where these girls just like, they just kind of, they hold them up like this. And the next thing you know, they keep just taking them on these adventures and they're just stuck. They're like, I don't know. She's got this sword held up to us. Like, <laughs> what do you do? You don't just like leave from that. So next thing you know, they're like, I can't remember what. They were like driving to like Vegas or something. Like, Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> got, Vegas. Still, still held up at sword point. Not realizing they're like, you know, these are just two 10 year old girls. You could have just probably walked away. But you can't. You're at the sword point with like, yeah, those nerf swords. You know, you're kind of stuck there. 
it, 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 it's one of those ones like from an outside perspective it just looks like them like what the fuck are those guys doing up two ten year old girls but to them it's just like oh god we're being held hostage <laughs> <laughs> Which instead we never complete we never completed episode one. We just have the first part, half of the episode and just end so unlike setting. It's, it has such an unsettling ending with no resolution. We gotta we gotta finish that at some point. At some point we do. It's just it's that, it was that thing that like when we first discovered animation, it's like anything is possible. Let's do this show and that show and that show. And then you realize like when it took so long, you're like, okay, we can pick one show, one show only. And at that point, it's like I guess we're doing Batman. Like, there's just not enough time to do them all. Like, we had, all, we had like, maybe five ideas, like, going on, and then it was like, time only calls for so much animation now. <laughs> Inner Clint Eastwood just started talking some sense to you. And then slide slowly off. Off screen with his outlaw Josie Wells camera techniques. But, yeah. But at least, okay, Christmas time, we get to look forward to not only Star Wars, but also... The new um, Quentin Tarantino movie. I almost said Clint Eastwood movie. Well, you can tell he's taking some Clint Eastwood, like, probably inspiration there. So I know, it looks pretty sweet. It's a weird movie to come out on Christmas Day, but whatever. Hey, Polite. Well, I'm working Christmas Day, so I'll probably be seeing that after I'm, more after, uh, after I'm off. But yeah, I can't wait for that one. That one just looks sweet. Mm. But that's probably a good place to wrap it up with. So watch out when you go to the toy aisle. You never know who's going to be there holding you up at... Sword point. Nobody's gonna hold you up at gunpoint, but they'll hold you up for sure at sword point. Mainly because a gun. Gunpoint you... just shoot you. <laughs> well, because mainly because you... with a gun you'd have to unpack it out of the box. A sword you can just pick up and start wielding. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but um, till then, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, movies, cartoons, and more. Well, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan, and I've been Ryan Anderson. Thank you guys for having me. No problem. Thank you for coming on. I know. We just don't get to have guests anymore. <laughs> so, like, whenever it is, I was like, wait a Scare second. Off. Ryan is three doors down. He can come be the fucking guest. He has Fallout. We all have something in common. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's how we did it. So, till then, Yay. we will all see you folks some other time. Later. Check out our website at oldmanorange.com for even more podcasts, cartoons, videos, music, and more. Send us an email at oldmanorangepodcast at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review us on iTunes, Podomatic, or any of the other fine sites we might be located on. If you want to help out even more, click on the Amazon or GameStop links on our webpage before you make any purchases there. It won't cost you a penny, but it sends us a little something our way. Thanks again, and tune in next week for more Old Man Orange Podcast.